I was born in Peru of diplomatic Chilean parents. My father abandoned my mother when I was three, and we moved back, my mother and the kids, to my grandparents' house in Chile, where I grew up. Later, my mother remarried another diplomat, and I started traveling with my stepfather. So my childhood was about saying goodbye to places, friends, dogs. It was not a very happy childhood. Isabel, at a young age, realized that her mother was left with three young kids and she had not finished studying, she didn't have a profession, and that definitely marked Isabel to understand that as a woman, she had to find her own way without depending on a man. Years later, in my early 20s, I discovered that there was something called feminism. That there were millions of women in the world that were thinking like me, and they had an articulate, intelligent, humorous language to express it. So I found my calling. She's a natural storyteller, a great listener, a person who was warm, humble, and filled with passion for life. I've always been telling stories. I have been fascinated with stories. I, I remember things in terms of stories. In 1981, I started a, a letter from my grandfather who was dying in Chile, and I couldn't go back to bid him farewell. My grandfather died, and I kept on writing and writing. And after a year, I had 500 and something pages on the kitchen counter. And that was my first novel, The House of the Spirits. I had no idea what I had written. I had never expected it to be published, let alone did I expect that it would be a success. When House of the Spirits came out, you know, it was exploding all over the world. And in my family, those women who read, read portions of the book to the women who didn't read. It was incredible. My daughter, Paula, who was 28 years old, she had a condition called porphyria. She died in my arms after a year in a coma. And when she died, I had the feeling that that year had been a long night. And my mother said, write. If you don't write, you will go crazy. Isabel and her daughter, Paula, had a very close relationship. And many times, Isabel will call her for advice and Paula will tell her mom, what is the kindest thing you can do in this situation? I decided to create a foundation whose mission it is to invest in the power of women and girls. So we try to work on education, defense against exploitation, and of course, reproductive rights. Now we focus a lot on immigration and refugees because there is a global crisis, and not to mention the crisis we have in the border with Mexico. You know, women and children, women and children first. And I love, you know, so many of us want to protect people or save people. And what does she say? I want them empowered. There are several mantras in my life. One of them is that if the world is going to be healed, women will have to do it. We have to end the patriarchy. And from then on, we can start building something better and brighter and more just. <laughs>